And we're back with more Seattle Kraken franchise mode. And in this one, we have the start of the year seven regular season with your Seattle Kraken. And in this one, we need to set a new captain, as obviously in the last one, we traded our captain, Adrian Kempe. And there are a couple of obvious choices for captain, one of which being Austin Matthews. And Adam Fantilli is another one, a good one, I think, with the big year that he had last year, having over a point per game, 82 points in 77 games. So a couple of strong candidates at forward. Uh, on defense, you have Luke Hughes, you have Brandstrom, you have Pellick, who I'm considering for captain may not be the obvious choice, but I think it's the right choice. We're going to be going with the defenseman, so it's not going to be Austin Matthews. And who it's going to be? Mr. Adam Pellick. If you remember correctly, he won two awards this past season, not only the Bill Masterton Trophy, but also the Mark Messier Leadership Award. So I figured it was only fitting that he get the captaincy, as well as the fact that he's been here with us for six years now. He's been here the entire time we've been a franchise, and he's been a rock-solid defenseman for us every single year. As we take a look at his average grades, 64, 66, 65, 65, 63, 65, 63, he has been solid every single year. So I think he's deserving of the captaincy. And now look at the Hockey Hall of Fame inductions. You have Kevin Hatcher, Zidane Char, Mark Andre Fleury, and Patrick Marlowe all being inducted into the Hall of Fame. So here's our roster going into the preseason. We currently have 32 players on the roster, so we're obviously going to need to make some cuts <laughs> before the start of the season. But currently we have Lindbergh, Odinger, and Larson in goal. On defense, you have Hughes, Brandstrom, Nemich, Pellick, Forsmark, Mirages, Kirsanov, Gulyev, and Lauren. And at forward, you have Matthews, Fantilli, Dubé, Arvidsson, Amirov, Van Sickle, Suzuki, Ronnie, Anishko, Zui. Perry, Nermi, Hollander, Gelbard, Hanak, Caffrey, Stewart, <laughs> Shory, Petru, and Gold. Oh, that's right. We also, since Pellick was an alternate captain, we also have to set another alternate here. So who do I want to be a second alternate here? Matthews is obviously keeping the first alternate. I think I'll give it to one of our first draft picks ever. As a matter of fact, I think he was our first draft pick ever as Luke Hughes. I think he is well-deserving of this alternate captaincy as... He had his best year yet last year, 60 points, and it looks like he's only getting better from here. And he's 24 years of age, so I, I figure, you know, he's well beyond that point of being a young guy. As, as a matter of fact, he is probably one of the leaders on this team now. Ability-wise, he's also our best defenseman, so I think he is well-deserving of this alternate number two. All right, so we've played about half the preseason, and I think I'm ready to make some cuts here. There are quite a few at forward. It's a little bit harder on defense because there's not as many defensemen who are standing out in a bad way. But I think I'm going to send Goyev down to the AHL. He only has a 53 grade in total, 52 offensive, 55 defensive, so nothing too impressive. I can send him back to the SML. I don't think he has much to prove there. I think we'll just send him to the AHL. I think we're also going to send back Lauren. Not because I'm not impressed with him. That 68 offensive grade is the best <laughs> offensive grade on our defensive core. But uh, I think he could just use a bit more seasoning in the AHL. Obviously, he's already really good offensively. But I think if he could get that getting open up there a little bit more, he could become even better. And I don't know if he's going to be able to do that at the NHL level. So we're going to send him down to the AHL for right now. And besides, his previous level of play was at the LHJQ, which I'm assuming is a yeah Quebec Junior League. So I think if he gets some decent experience down there in the AHL, maybe a year or so, I think that getting open rating will be a lot better, and it will just he'll be able to dominate at the NHL level sooner rather than later, hopefully. So we're going to be sending him back to the AHL, and hopefully he can put up some good numbers there. So with that, we are now down to seven defensemen, so I believe this is the group that we're going to be going with going into the season. Hughes has a minor injury, but he should be back before the start of the regular season. It's only a black eye. As for forwards, there's quite a few forwards who I think we can cut right off the bat. Drew Stewart. Not too impressive. 46 defensive grade, 58 offensive. I'm going to send him to the AHL. I'm also going to cut Gregory Perry. I believe he was a first-round pick of ours last year as a two-and-a-half star with only a 51 offensive grade and a 50 defensive grade. Eh, we'll send him back to the WHL. I'm also going to send down Scott Shorey, only a 54 offensive grade and a 51 defensive grade. Carol Hanak can also be sent down to the AHL, or actually he could go to the ELH. He had a really good season there last year. I don't know if he necessarily needs to go there again. But then again, he would probably get top line ice time there. So yeah, I'll send him back to 
his previous league. So while I am impressed with Evan Caffrey's grade, he has a 79 offensive grade, which is the highest on the team, but a 43 defensive grade and a one and a half star ability. I don't think it's far-fetched to say that he probably won't be able to keep that up in the regular season. So we're going to be sending him down to the AHL. Same deal for Tanner Gold. His 71 offensive grade, that's pretty good, but 45 defensive grade and one and a half star ability. Once again, same sort of deal for him. So we're going to be sending him to the AHL as well. I'm also going to send Jimmy Larson down to the AHL. He's been playing, he played really well in the preseason. He had an 88 grade, which, I mean, that's one game. But he had a 939 save percentage in that one game. So he, he certainly looks to have a promising future. But I want to see more of a sample size out of him. So we're going to send him to the AHL. And hopefully this year he'll get a lot of playing time there. And if not, then we're going to have to loan him out somewhere else. Because, you know, it, it looks like he has a promising future. But I just need to see more of a sample size from him before I'm ready to move on from Lindbergh. Because Lindbergh is pretty solid himself. So with that, I believe we have our roster here as we are down to 23 players. And our salary cap is currently at $78.2 million. So let's go over our final roster once more before we go into the regular season. You have Odinger and Lindbergh in goal. On defense, you have Pellick, Forsmark, Branstrom, Mirages, Hughes, Kirsanov, and Nemich. And at forward, you have Matthews, Fantilli, Dubé, Arvidsson, Amirov, Van Sickle, Suzuki, Ronnie, Onishko, Zui, Nurmi, Hollander, Gelbard, and Petru. So I don't know what it is with Philip Lindbergh so far this season, but he has been absolutely dreadful. <laughs> In the five games that he's played, he has not had a save percentage over an 880. And in, in one game, he had a 500. And then an 864, 867, 808. Like, jeez. I mean, I, I don't think I've ever seen horrendous goaltending like this in this save file just yet up until now. <laughs> 835 save percentage on average with a 46 grade. Yeah, that definitely, I think he has to be sent to the AHL. There's no way around it because that is just absolutely dreadful. We're going to be call. we're going to play some on waivers and we're going to call up Mr. Jimmy Larson. So after one month, we are nine, six, and one. We've played 16 games in the first month. So as we take a look at our schedule, we played literally nothing but back to backs. As we see here, back to back, 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 back to back. Back to back and back to back. So I'm not sure what to make this month as a result. All I know is we had quite a few stinkers in there. 62 loss, 63 loss, a 93 loss against Ottawa. We also had a few big wins in there as well, though. 7-3 win, 6-3 win, 6-3, 6-4, 6-4. A lot of high-scoring games in general. You get the idea. So as a result, as we take a look at our goaltending, it's obviously the numbers aren't going to be too good. <laughs> Jimmy Larson isn't much better than what's... Mr. Lindbergh had, but for right now, I guess I can excuse it. It's not like we have any better options anyway. And then Odinger with a 9-10. So for how high scoring the games have been over the past month, I guess I can forgive it for right now. And defensively, once again, no one's really going to have a good defensive grade, obviously, besides Hughes and Brandstrom, who seem to be doing well for themselves. But uh, otherwise, it's looking not great defensively as of late. Forward-wise... The only one with a 60 or above defensively is Matthews, <laughs> and he has, of course, 18 points in 16 games, so he's getting it done offensively as well. Onishko with 19 points in 16 games, so actually let's take a look at the stat screen here. So Onishko and Amirov are tied for the team lead in points with 19. Uh, Matthews, of course, as we saw with 18. Dubé with 15. Fantilli with 12. Van Sickle with 11. Suzuki with 10. So we're getting some scoring here. It's just, like I said, defensively, we are seemingly nowhere to be found right now. So we could definitely be doing better, but you know what? It's it's fine for right now because we're in a playoff spot, but defensively, we need to definitely sharpen up over the next month or two. Oh, and on the injury list, we have Pellick and Forsmark, so that might be part of the reason why we have been struggling defensively a little bit. But Pellick's only been out for a few games, so it's not like... His injury has even been that big of an effect yet. Obviously, we need Pellick back as soon as possible because he is one of our best defensive defensemen. Although, once again, when you take a look at our schedule, we have had nothing but back to back so far. So, <laughs> you know, once we get more games that are... Uh, oh my goodness, do we have nothing but back to backs this season or something? Let's see. Back to back. Back to back. <laughs> Another back to back. This is our first game right here against Detroit on November 12th. That is our first game without a back to back. Wow. 
<laughs> so unfortunately, Sebastian Ajo's time here in Seattle has come to an end. I just placed him on waivers and he was claimed by the Detroit Red Wings as we had to put Adam Pellick back onto the roster. So it's unfortunate, but it's the way it goes sometimes. So we're on December 1st now. I have sent Donovan Lauren down to the ECHL with the Norfolk Admirals because I felt like he wasn't he really wasn't getting much growth with the Palm Springs Kraken. He only had a 55 grade, and he really didn't put up the offensive numbers I was hoping he would. So I think in a more of a prominent role down here in the ECHL, I'm hoping he'll be able to get more points and thus more growth. And as for the Seattle Kraken, we are 18, 11, and 1. Uh, not bad. We're, I believe, second in our division as we take a look here. Yeah. And we're in a pretty comfortable position right now. We're six points ahead of the third place Golden Knights. It's not bad, but we could be doing better. Take a look at our goaltender stats. You have Odinger with a 9-11 save percentage and an 891 for Jimmy Larson. On defense, you have Kirsanov with 22 points for Kirsanov, really. He had 28 all last season. Works for me. I, I, I don't care who's doing the point scoring as long as someone's getting points there on the back end. And it looks like it's Kirsanov this year. And then you have Branston with 20 points in 29 games, Nemec with 15, Mirages with 14, Hughes only with 13, really. Even after his 60-point season last year, I guess he slowed down a bit. It looks like he's doing better defensively, though, because he has that 72 total grade, so he, he must be doing better defensively. Pellick with 5 points and Forsmark with 1 in 11 games. And then for forwards, you have Matthews with 39 points in 30 games. Amirov with 33. Onishko with 30. So Onishko doing much better than last season. He had 11 points total last season in 66 games. He already has 30 points this year in 30 games. Fantilli with 29, 24 for Van Sickle, 23 for Dubé. So we're finally scoring, it looks like. We're getting some depth scoring. We're getting star scoring. We're getting scoring from everywhere. Our problem still sits, though, with defense, unfortunately. So definitely something to be worked on, but it looks like we're getting better as a team, finally. Nurmi with 16 points, Suzuki only with 14. You have Arvidsson with 13, Zui with 12, 11 for Ronnie, 4 for Gelbard in 12 games, 1 for Petru in 8 games, and nothing for Hollander in 11. And now let's take a look at grades. Defensively, you have Hughes with the 72 overall and 77 defensive grades. So yeah, he's definitely getting better defensively. It looks like he's pretty much consistently better than Pellick now. And then you have Branson with a 69 and a 65 offensive grade, 71 defensive. Pellick, he's doing basically what he usually does defensively. And then you have Kirsanov, who of course, as we saw, leads our defensive core in points with 22. Nemich with a 63 offensive grade. And then for Forrest Mark and Mirages, nothing really to write home about. At forward, you have Matthews with a 76 grade overall and an 81 offensive grade. No one else even comes close. Of course, he also has that 66 defensive grade. And with Fantilli, he has a 63 overall, as does Dubé. 62 for Amirov, 61 for Onishko and Van Sickle, and a 60 for Suzuki. So like I said, overall, we're doing pretty well, but I think we could be doing better, especially defensively. So with that, I think I'm going to leave things off here. Let me know what you guys think, and in the next one, we will continue the year seven simulation and hopefully get to the playoffs. So that remember hit like and subscribe and I'll see you guys in the next one.